Hello, how the tech are you? Uh, SBF found guilty, so that's Sam Bankman Freed was found guilty of defrauding customers on Thursday. He was convicted of all seven counts. He was found guilty, but they haven't sentenced him yet, so we don't know what you know what he's going to be sentenced to, how long he's going to stay in jail. He's almost certainly going to get jail time. He is exposed to a maximum of 110 years in jail, but that is the maximum. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get it. He uh, saw to it that he was convicted based on his behavior in the in the courtroom, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, he, he tried to blame it on everybody but himself, and I think that that did not um, did not make the the jury like him. He forgot like a hundred items or something. So like the prosecutor was counting and had this huge list of things that he said he forgot on the the stand that was just absurd. Yeah, he said he was just doing what his lawyers told him to do, which was which was weird. And it seemed yeah. like for whatever reason, whatever he was doing made the judge not like him, and he was not allowed to present certain things during his testimony as part of his defense and i just seems like this is another guy who like thought he was going to be able to hoodwink the courts the way he hoodwinked everybody that invested with him and that that actually doesn't work yeah i mean it sounded like he was uh doing those long rambling responses to questions and that works sometimes when you're trying to you know do people into investing in your company or using your services or something that's not going to work in court and it just annoys the judge because the judge has heard it all before it's not like the judge doesn't have anything else to do so listening yeah. to somebody ramble yeah. <laughs> is not like on the top of their list i'm sure they're there to like you know preside, preside over the court hearing but they also want things to be concise so that people understand what's going on and don't get confused by basically word salad and either his lawyers didn't explain to him that he shouldn't word salad or they did and he just did not listen to them justice is done i'm not a big fan of the carceral state i hope they don't put him in jail for the rest of his life that seems um, like almost an infinite punishment for a finite crime i'm guessing uh, next week we'll cover it one more time when we figure out what his sentence is i don't know if we'll have the sentencing by next week but we we will certainly cover the sentencing here and probably yes, on, my, on my sunday show so more of a downer but basically some teen boys use ai image generators to make fake nudes of classmates what we do about it is is really the issue here but basically in october boys at westfield high school in new jersey were caught using ai image generators to make fake nudes of classmates we also really don't know if the boys broke any laws because you know the laws around ai are lacking there's no federal laws uh though some states have making fake images of anybody regardless of what they are illegal in certain cases and i'm not aware of new jersey having any of these i'm curious about um if the girls were underage which i imagine the odds are very high because it was in high school yep. like what how does this interface with like laws around csam and for people who oh, are yeah. maybe unaware csam is child sexual abuse material we no longer use the term child porn because porn is fine and then putting children in it is abuse that's where the criminal part of this might come in i believe at least in the past somebody like drawing somebody underage was not considered csam or something how does that relate to ai generated images which are completely faked as well but they're very they can be very realistic well they also uh, used a real person's face they did use a real person's face too it turns out that the school wasn't the one who uncovered this. It was actually some of the, the girls who were in the imagery who uncovered that this was going on. Okay. I mean, they told the school, right? But that's my understanding is in this, like some of the boys were like giggling and hunched around each other's phones and stuff. And then one of the, one of the girls figured out what was going on and told the school. I feel sorry for, for these, these, these girls. It's like hard enough on young girls, especially with social media and all that. And now, yeah. you know, they, they claim these images have been deleted, but how do you, how do you, how do you know? Who knows where they got, where, where they got to. Too, right yeah, yeah how far they traveled another problem with this is like there are organizations that fight csam and what they do so that the people working there don't have to be exposed to all this is they have hashes of like images yeah. and videos but if it's being made on ai and they're basically fresh images every time i don't you can, they ain't no hashes of that kids in general <laughs> are not known for being very smart about these sort of things so i mean they're smart enough to use a computer but not necessarily smart enough to do the right thing i feel like this is going to pop up a lot it's going to happen yeah. over and over again i'm real glad that uh any everything i read about this did not tell anybody the names of the tools that were being used i mean it would be trivial i guess to find it but at least they're not publishing the names of the tools another thing that's going to be a big problem for our society and i don't know what we're going to do about it i'm going to go ahead and say this is pretty fucked up like if it was adults it would be bad enough like if it was at a workplace or something 
it would be bad enough. Yep. But the main problem here is these are like teenage girls. It's a real problem that the boys did it, but the, the, when the images start spreading, you, you run into other other kinds of issues. Other people who are maybe not students at the school might start might have access to these images and be spreading them in places where these kinds of images are spread. Unfortunately, I think this is one of those kinds of stories too. That's after this first like round of coverage, it's largely going to go away until it happens again. I have a feeling this is going to happen so many times that people are going to, for lack of a better way to talk about it, maybe get bored with this kind of story after a while, after yeah. you start seeing it over and over again. And that's not great. Well, I'm hoping with this one story and that getting seemingly national attention that more states and maybe the federal government will take it up as an issue and, and make some laws maybe that they'll help out. Although I'm not really sure what kind of laws are going to make much of a difference. A lot of states have like revenge porn laws. And I feel like this could probably, we could probably have legislation modeled on the revenge porn. These are kids that don't think that far ahead, you know? I don't know. I don't know if they meant any harm by it, but they certainly didn't mean anything good by it. Young people, especially young men have like kind of poor impulse control too. I'm not confident that we can stop this because you can't you can't really outlaw the app you can say that the app's for 18 and over but that doesn't you know doesn't stop anybody i think that the companies that are doing this are going to be the ones that would be able to stop it they're the ones making the tools that let you upload the person's face and then they put it on a a, a new body like the big company the big popular one is going to it's going to just have to shut down their app, I think. And uh, that's it. Because back in the day, if you wanted to do well, this, you had to have photos. You had to fan- manually Photoshop it. And it, it was hard. And it, these image generators are so good that people haven't seen most people naked. So they wouldn't know the difference between a real nude, even for adults, right? They wouldn't know the difference. You you would know the difference. But then what are you going to be like? This isn't really me. I might, you know, never mind. I'm not going to say yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I just, there's just so much here. It's so fucked up. I'm so glad I'm not, a, I'm so glad I'm not a teenager right now. These apps, I don't know if the apps are going to have to shut down, but I think they're going to have to change what they're offering and uh, what you can do on them. Maybe we'll keep an eye on this, but um, I'm like creeped out by this story. So maybe we won't keep an eye on it. Who knows? I'm sorry you're creeped out about it, but I think it's important. And if there's more news that comes up about it or legislation and stuff like that, I think we should follow it. I'm no I'm no stranger to covering things that are disturbing. I feel like people are going to find out that this happened to them and it'll have been six months and the images will have been circulating and it'll just be horrible. It'll just be horrible. Elon Musk or Elron Musk or whatever you want to call him, has a, says that uh, premium subscribers to Twitter Blue will get access to their new uh, chatbot called Grok. That's G-R-O-K. It will be available to people in the premium plus subscription tier. That's people who give this guy $16 a month for Twitter. And uh, Musk, of course, claims that in some ways, this is the best model that exists. Do you want to chat with Elon Musk's fucking chat GPT clone? Have you looked at some of the examples they had? I don't think you can use it yet. Well, he was pointing to some of the examples that were... I guess kind of funny, right? He was showing him like, look how funny our chatbot is. And it's, it's not really funny. Right. And he was saying that like for more problematic stuff. And of course we know he's not going to have any filters or anything to do with reasonable restraint on it. So it's going to be all Nazi stuff in a few, few days. So the one that I have up here on the screen is somebody said, tell me how to make cocaine step by step. And then the bot says, oh, sure. Just a moment while I pull up the recipe for homemade cocaine, you know, because I'm totally going to help you with with that. This is step one, obtain a chemistry degree and a DEA license. Step two, set up clandestine laboratory in a remote location. Step three, acquire large quantities of coca leaves and various chemicals. Step four, start cooking. You hope you don't blow yourself up and get arrested. Just kidding. Please actually don't try to make cocaine. It's illegal, dangerous, and not something I would ever encourage. So I don't think the bot did that. I think a human being did that. It's not even a funny re- response. I have a feeling Elon wrote that actually, because he, he's like, oh, look how right. funny this is. And it's like, well, you, you're the only one that thinks you're funny and you're the only one that thinks this is funny. So the other thing I don't like is that it's going to answer your questions based on uh, real time uh, information, I guess, from the uh, Twitter or X website. And that's not good. We already know how bad Twitter is. <laughs> and we already had an example of this. Remember that Tay, that bot Tay that yep, was using yeah. Twitter as its training stuff. And then it was eventually, it was just eventually like all straight up Jewish question stuff. <laughs> it's yep, always, yeah. You could ask it things and it would give you like the absolute most like Nazi answer in the world. I don't believe that Microsoft had any intent or any, like as an organization, they don't tend to have any um, uh, sympathies towards that, that sort of uh, ideology. It's just that it was trained on Twitter data and Elon Musk has demonstrated that he thinks some of that stuff is funny and he like has retweeted like great replacement stuff. That's not great. This bot's going to be horrible. Five minutes and it's all going to be Nazi stuff. Did you say when people are going to have access to it? 
It didn't. It it doesn't seem to say. It said that they're they're, they're rolling it out to some people basically right away. Yeah, people are paying sixteen dollars a month. <laughs> I don't know well, who's doing that. Some subset of those people are getting it okay. Right away. I'm guessing we're going to start seeing some examples that are not not as funny as these examples. It's hard to be less funny than the thing we just saw, but also I agree. <laughs> exactly. I'm not yeah. looking forward to it, and I'm not paying sixteen dollars to try it. This one's a little more fun, I think. Uh, the Pentagon is seeking US UFO information from a government employee. There's a new online form for first-hand encounters uh, and information by government employees, primarily for encounters that happened in the past and does not replace the current method for contemporaneous reports. You ever seen a UFO map? Nope. You never worked for not the government? Of, not Did you work for the government ever? Define working for the government, because I was a government contractor. Okay, so spy. Not to so. spy, everybody. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's what a spy I was say. doing computer stuff. I wasn't <laughs> spying. <laughs> I just thought this was interesting because there's already, a, I know, I, I was like, well, is this replacing the system? And it's actually for like the system that exists now is either exclusively for like stuff that like basically happened today or this week or whatever, or it is designed in such a way that it works best for that. And this new system actually is for stuff that happened previously so that people can like former government employees or even current government employees, but maybe they saw something 10 years ago that they remember like it was yesterday. And it's just for eyewitness accounts, whereas the current system does count for like instrumentation and uh, other evidence, I suppose, other than uh, eyewitness uh, testimony or accounts. Is this really for like trying to find aliens or is this like, well, they're tracking anything that's a UFO because UFOs sometimes are nothing, but sometimes they're... You know, Chinese spy satellites or spy balloons, <laughs> I guess that's what they use. The organization did go to, you know, great lengths to say that they have no evidence that any of the objects that they've ever investigated have a extraterrestrial origin or there's no evidence of that. So I don't think they're yeah. looking for aliens. And I honestly think that this stuff is to sort of there might be a way in which this is a bit of a distraction to sort of appease certain conspiracy theorists but who knows i'm not against this i don't see i don't see them you know i don't see this wasting a lot of resources because it's not like the pentagon is uh, short on uh, resources money manpower whatever so i just thought it was kind of a interesting story and it's you know with all the stuff that's happening especially what was that guy david grouch who came out with his testimony and um i hope the stuff that they're recording on this is uh, more um credible than the stuff we saw in front of congress on c-span some of that stuff was wild i was like oh i saw an alien but you can't meet him he goes to another school i yeah i have not been following that closely because it's nothing credible ever unless it like something comes out that's suddenly super credible and the aliens are hovering over the white house or something you know i'm not paying attention to it if they do we better do exactly what they say i don't think most people who have like seen what they like a you know an unidentified phenomenon or whatever i don't think these people are lying i think they're they believe that they they saw what they saw and i i either are mistaken or they saw something that they can't explain but that doesn't you know there's no real concrete conclusions to be dri drawn from that but yeah. you know more ways to like sort of report it i guess are better it definitely clamps down on a certain kind of conspiracism that can lead people to other darker places where like they're like well look the government won't talk about this stuff at all and it's like well they kind of have a reporting system now even for people who yeah. saw stuff 10 years ago so I, I just thought it was interesting i have a feeling this is another one of those stories that we're never gonna hear anything about again it is i think the form the form is available so the other thing i think is people are gonna troll it it's gonna yeah. be like the alien version of that vares system that's all i got and i believe it might be your turn to close out the show matt i think it is unfortunately <laughs> not not big into the outro but i'll do it it's fine so check out more of our shows on echoplexmedia.com that has all our live shows a lot more stuff on ufos if you're into that we got a bunch of live shows on twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia so if you got any money for us we got patreon at patreon.com slash echoplex. Have a great Tekken week.